Taylor Marshall holds an inconsistent and false position on the status of Francis. Marshall has repeatedly called Francis a heretic based on his external teachings and actions. We're dealing with heretics. That's right, the H word. Heretics. Last week on February 2nd, Francis Bergoglio denied two articles of the Apostles' Creed. So when you deny articles of the Apostles' Creed publicly, that's heresy. When you worship statues that are not depicting God or the saints, holy people, persons, that's idolatry. Here's what St. Robert Bellarmine, doctor of the church, has to say. He says, quote, I'm reading right here, Oop, right here. For men are not bound or able to read hearts, but when they see that someone is a heretic by his external works, they judge him to be a heretic, pure and simple, and condemn him as a heretic. St. Robert Bellarmine, De Romano Pontifice, Book 2, Chapter 30. What is key here for Robert Bellarmine, St. Robert Bellarmine? That when, that when they see someone as a heretic by his external works, they judge him to be a heretic, pure and simple. This man, by his works in his words, Cardinal Horick, is a heretic. Pope Francis, also, by denying two articles of the Apostles' Creed, we're not talking about intricate points of theology. We're talking about the Apostles' Creed. Heretic. This man's a heretic. Francis, heretic. On this point, Taylor Marshall is correct. Francis is certainly a heretic. In fact, he is a notorious heretic. Based upon Francis' external teachings, actions, religious indifferentism, etc., Catholic principles require one to recognize and condemn him as a heretic. Marshall, however, proceeds to equivocate when he repeatedly says that he has no authority to declare Francis a heretic, and when he continues to regard the public heretic Francis as the Pope. Let me just say, I'm just a layman. I'm not a priest, I'm not a monsignor, a bishop, archbishop, cardinal, or pope. I'm just a layman, and I have 0, 0.000 authority to declare anyone a formal heretic. I have zero authority to say that about Francis. I want you to understand me. I'll say it a third time. I have zero authority in the church to declare anyone a heretic. Zero. Zilch. And yet, I also live by the good words here of St. Robert Bellarmine. He says, for men are not bound or able to read the hearts. I can't read the heart. Francis Bergoglio. I can't see into it. I don't know if he's been corrected or admonished by people or not. How many times that happened? I don't know. But when we see that someone is a heretic, Bellarmine says, by his external works, they judge him to be a heretic, pure and simple, and condemn him as a heretic. I can hear things that are heretical and say, that's a heresy. But I can't declare formal heresy manifest heresy. I can't do any of those things. Marshall is equivocating. That is, he is using ambiguous language to conceal the truth or avoid committing himself to a position. In the process, he contradicts himself and contradicts Catholic teaching, as we will see. First, Marshall doesn't seem to know the difference between what is notorious in law and what is notorious in fact. Notorious in law refers to when a sentence has been passed by a canonical judge or the offender has confessed in court. In other words, it refers to an official declaration and a canonical process. But that's not the only way that one can become a notorious heretic. One can be notorious in fact. To be notorious in fact, no declaration, no official warnings, and no canonical process are required. Notorious in fact refers to when the offending action, for example a statement of heresy, is publicly known and its sinful or imputable character is also publicly known. This certainly applies to Francis. This is easily proven because Francis contradicts basic dogmas, dogmas that he's aware of, and dogmas that he's bound to know. Non è lecito convincere della tua fede. Il proselitismo è il veleno più forte contro il cammino ecumenico. 
voy a convencer a otro que sea católico. No, no, no. C'è un grosso peccato contro l'ecumenismo. Il proselitismo. Mai si deve fare proselitismo con gli ortodossi. Io credo che le intenzioni di Martin Lutero non erano sbagliate. E oggi luterani e cattolici Ah, protestanti tutti, siamo d'accordo sulla dottrina della giustificazione. Cioè, su questo punto, tanto importante, lui non è aveva sbagliato. We're not talking about intricate points of theology. We're talking about the Apostles' Creed. Heretic. Francis has also admitted that his own teaching might be heresy and he doesn't care. E mi viene alla mente di dire algo che... Puede ser una insensatez. O quizás una herejía. He preaches a false gospel. He teaches that it's good to participate in non-Catholic worship, etc. He is a notorious heretic. We cover this in detail in our video Great Proof Texts for Sedevacantism. Among other things, we cite the pre-Vatican II dissertation called The Delict of Heresy by canonist Father Eric McKenzie. Mackenzie correctly noted that a person who claims to be Catholic can be a simple heretic, that is, one who has not received canonical warnings and not been declared a heretic, yet can be a notorious and manifest heretic. Thus, when Marshall says that he has no authority to declare Francis a heretic, that's true in regard to rendering Francis notorious in law via a canonical declaration, but it's irrelevant because Francis is notorious in fact. Indeed, if Francis were the Pope, he's not, but for the sake of argument, let's just say that he were. In that case, there would be no one on earth who has the authority to canonically warn him or issue a canonical declaration against him, since such actions require jurisdiction over the person, and no one has jurisdiction over a Pope. That's why all of the talk about Vatican II quote cardinals officially correcting Francis is nonsense. If you think that Francis is the Pope, none of those supposed cardinals have any authority to officially warn or correct Francis. Declarations, however, could be issued against someone who is already recognized to be outside the church and not the Pope by virtue of notorious heresy. Marshall also contradicts the teaching of Pope Pius XII. That's because Marshall admits that Francis is a heretic based on his external statements, such as his denial of articles of the Apostles' Creed and his rejection of the official teaching of Pope Pius XII and Mystici Corporis. But when you look at what Pope Francis has said, the text, and you look at what Pius XII has said, about separating yourself from the church and what Francis says about the communion of saints, it is opposite. But he still considers him to be inside the church. That's a problem. Someone who is a heretic by his external works and statements does not profess the true faith. Let me repeat that. Someone who is a heretic by his external works, as Marshall admits Francis is, does not profess the true faith. It's completely contradictory to assert that Francis professes the true faith while asserting that Francis is a heretic against the true faith by his external works. This man's a heretic. Francis, heretic. Since Marshall rightly calls Francis a heretic by his external works, he must admit that Francis does not profess the true faith. But Pope Pius XII and Mystici Corpus teaches that, quote, actually only those are to be included as members of the church who have received the laver of regeneration and profess the true faith, end quote. Since Francis does not profess the true faith, and it would be a blasphemy to say that he does in light of what he teaches, he cannot be considered to be a member of the church. Therefore, he cannot be considered the Pope. If Marshall were consistent and faithful to Catholic teaching, he would affirm that since Francis does not profess the true faith, he cannot be the Pope. But he does not take that position. He still calls Francis the Pope and still considers him to be the Pope. Pope Francis. He contradicts himself, and ironically, he contradicts the official teaching of Pope Pius XII and Mystici Corporis, among others, one of the documents that he specifically cites to prove that Francis is a heretic. Pope Francis has taught something heretical yesterday. What's interesting about it is that it word for word contradicts the words of Pope Pius XII. Marshall also admits that Francis is a wolf who attacks the flock with heretical teaching. I thought this image was powerful of the wolf in the sheep clothing. Like I said last week, 
I'm not a shepherd. You're not a shepherd unless you're a bishop watching this. When wolves come in, let me put it back up. Here's the picture. When wolves come into the sheepfold, all I can do is go, bah, bah, look out, alert, alert. There's a wolf among us. When you're out with sheep, if a wolf runs in to the sheepfold and the shepherd is away, those sheep are going to be, bah, bah, and they're going to be telling all the other sheep, there is a wolf here. Look out. Y'all are about to die. Someone's going to get bit. There's about to be blood on the ground. A wolf is in the sheepfold. And I'm on a webcam right now going, bah, there is wolves. There is blood. There is danger amongst us. All I can do is let other people know, hey, do you want to get bitten by a wolf? Do you want a wolf to put his jaws on your throat? Look out. Well, St. Robert Bellarmine correctly teaches that a wolf who devours people with heretical teaching cannot hold jurisdiction in the church. That's because the authority of the Catholic Church cannot lead people into heresy. St. Robert Bellarmine, quote, It would be the most miserable condition of the church if she were compelled to recognize a wolf manifestly prowling for a shepherd, end quote. Marshall recognizes a wolf as a shepherd. Pope Francis. In fact, he recognizes many wolves as, quote, shepherds because he considers the apostate fake bishops in the counter-church to be the legitimate hierarchy. He contradicts Catholic teaching and leads sheep to the slaughter by encouraging them to submit to a heretical false shepherd who will devour them with heretical teaching such as Amoris Laetitia, among other things. Marshall also tries to justify various contradictory positions on Francis's status by bringing up the fact that St. Vincent Ferrer mistakenly followed an antipope in good faith for a period of time during the Great Western Schism. But for a time, St. Vincent Ferrer was following what turned out to be the antipope and defending him. And this is why I don't get out on the internet and throw bricks at other Catholics or other trads. I don't throw bricks at the Sede Contis or the SSPX or the FSSP or the Institute of Christ the King. But the two situations are not comparable because the antipopes during the Great Western Schism were not notorious heretics who preached a false gospel. They also did not teach people to commit mortal sins against the faith through participation in non-Catholic worship and false ecumenism. See our video, Vatican II is a New Religion, for how serious this is. To obstinately maintain communion with Francis and the Vatican II sect is to be implicated in its heresies, its false worship, and its false ecumenism. Yes, there can be a process by which people come up to speed and digest the relevant facts about what's happening and what has happened since Vatican II, but when presented with certain facts and teachings, people must reject Francis and the Vatican II sect. The obstinate failure to do this is spiritually fatal. And if you say he is a heretical pope, you have an obligation not to be in communion with him. Perhaps the clearest example of why people must absolutely reject Francis as an antipope is the false canonization of the notorious idolater and antichrist, John Paul II. If you think that Francis is the pope, you must accept antipope John Paul II as a saint. But doing that is a rejection of the Catholic faith and the First Commandment. Considering him to be a saint in the face of the facts implicates people in mortal sins against the First Commandment. See our videos Apocalypse Now in the Vatican, The Antichrist Distinguishing Mark, and Vatican II as a New Religion. St. John Paul II. Pope St. John Paul II. Pope St. John Paul the Great. St. John Paul. St. John Paul. I'm not questioning his personal holiness. Of course, St. John Paul II. It's a term given to these teachings of St. John Paul the Great. Two of the great uh, saints of our times are St. Padre Pio and St. John Paul II. Pope St. John Paul II. There are similarities between the current situation and the Great Western Schism, but crucial differences as well. That's because the Great Western Schism was a severe crisis in church history, but the Vatican II apostasy that we are currently living through is the apocalyptic fulfillment of prophecies about the end times beast, that is, pagan Rome returned. See our video Apocalypse Now in the Vatican. I mean, incredible. It, you can't help but draw apocalyptic conclusions. Marshall also needs to learn the Catholic Church's teaching that people who preach heresy notoriously, as Francis does, cannot hold office in the Catholic Church. If he says you cannot be separated from the church, you cannot be separated from the communion of saints, even with apostasy, he says you can deny your baptism and you are at home. Those are his words, not mine. That's heresy. So yeah, let's call a spade a spade. Let's call a heresy a heresy. Let's call a schism a schism. And let's call an idol an idol. You see a Pachamama and you see people carrying it around and worshiping, 
down on their knees with the face of the earth, worship. It's idolatry. And Pope Francis encouraged idolatry for the whole church. It's on video. It's on camera. We've shown it over and over. And he's promoting heresy. It's destruction in the vineyard of Jesus Christ. That means that even if Marshall tried to respond to this video by claiming that when he repeatedly called Francis a heretic, he only meant that Francis preaches heresy and that people need to reject his false preaching, that would not be consistent with his previous statements which clearly denounce Francis as a heretic, but it would still prove our point. That's because the Catholic Church teaches that people who preach heresy notoriously cannot hold office in the Church. St. Robert Bellarmine, quote, For that reason, Popes Celestine and Nicholas in the passages cited say that a heretical bishop, from the time he began to preach heresies, was not able to loose or bind anyone, end quote. Does Francis preach heresies? Yes. Does Marshall admit that he preaches heresies? Yes. And he's promoting heresy, its destruction, in the vineyard of Jesus Christ. The fact that someone who preaches such things cannot hold authority is not merely St. Robert Bellarmine's opinion. He is rather citing the official teaching of Pope St. Celestine and Pope Nicholas as we cover in our video. The same principle is also taught in the Catechism of St. Peter Canisius, among other things. I've spent a decent amount of time reading various things of St. Robert Bellarmine in Latin, and there's no doubt that St. Robert Bellarmine taught that people can be manifest heretics prior to any canonical declaration, official judicial process, etc. Those who tell you that St. Robert Bellarmine only considered people who are declared or canonically warned to be manifest heretics are either lying or don't know what they are talking about. There are many quotes to demonstrate this, but I want to cite just one in which St. Robert Bellarmine uses the exact term manifest heretic. This is from his work on the loss of grace in the state of sin, book 6, chapter 2. This is perhaps the first time this has been published in English. In this passage, St. Robert Bellarmine is talking about the heretical position of those who believe that infants who die without baptism and in a state of original sin will at some point be transferred into Christ's kingdom. He says, quote, Yet who, other than a manifest heretic, denies that children dying in sin are never going to be regenerated through Christ and are never at any time going to be transferred into his kingdom? End quote. Notice, St. Robert Bellarmine does not say that someone who holds this false position and then is warned and declared is a manifest heretic. No, he teaches that the position is so patently opposed to established and known Catholic teaching that someone who teaches that false position is considered by that very fact to be a manifest heretic. The same is true in regard to Francis's many denials of well-known aspects of Catholic teaching and the gospel. So, does a Catholic have the authority to reject Francis as a notorious heretic who is outside the church? Absolutely. A Catholic has the authority and the obligation to recognize notorious facts, to reject people who preach a false gospel, and to distinguish between those who profess the true faith and those who don't. For example, if someone showed up at church and the priest were baptizing with milk instead of water, that's notoriously invalid matter. A Catholic would have the authority and the obligation to shun and denounce such an invalid ceremony. Likewise, when a person preaches a false gospel, as Francis does, Catholics have the authority and the obligation to reject him as alien to the Church, as someone who does not profess the true faith and therefore cannot be considered a member of the Church. See Galatians 1, 8-9. To say otherwise is to deny the Church's external unity of faith, a mark of the true Church that the Vatican II sect of Francis clearly does not possess. Cardinal Dolan says he'd give Holy Communion to Joe Biden. New York's Archbishop made the comment in an interview with Fox News this morning. In fact, Taylor Marshall makes many statements which demonstrate that the Vatican II sect of Antipope Francis, with which he professes communion, is not Catholic and lacks the marks of the Church. Meanwhile, James Martin has no restrictions, no sanctions, no censures, nothing on him. But James Martin does get to meet with the Pope, and James Martin is appointed to the Dicastery of Communications so that he is officially a spokesperson for the Vatican. And he promotes his agenda. And by the way, yes, Bishop Barron did write an endorsement for Martin's latest book. Everybody out there that says, oh, Bishop Barron, yeah, he did good. He led people to church. Look, Bishop Barron is endorsing James Martin. Just accept it. That is the mainstream church. If you want to get promoted, if you're a bishop and you want to be an archbishop or you want to be a cardinal, you're going to get on the train with the four groups that we just mentioned here. You're going to write an endorsement for James Martin. Look who wrote endorsements for James Martin before. Tobin, and I think Supage. Guess what? They have red hats on their head right now. They're cardinals. That's what you do if you want to get a red cardinal hat. You write blurbs for James Martin. Bishop Barron's doing that. 
Marshall thinks it's acceptable for people like the Fraternity of St. Peter to remain in communion with apostate fake bishops who are pro, quote, LGBT, among other things. I've been a member of a Fraternity of St. Peter Parish for 11 years. That's not a Catholic position. Marshall has also stated that in the past, the Catholic Church, in his view, became heretical, corrupt, and denied her teaching. The Church was heretical. Peter said, you are Christ, Son of the living God. The church began to deny this truth in the 300s, right after she got legalization. In the early 300s, after 313, the Catholic Church had all kinds of privilege, money, fame, and she became corrupt and heretical until a moment of apostasy entered into the political scene. But that is contrary to Catholic teaching. The Catholic Church teaches that the magisterium is free from error, that the Church is preserved from blemish in her doctrine, and that she never has been nor could be contaminated. Since Marshall wrongly thinks that the Catholic Church can become heretical, perhaps that's one reason that he fails to recognize that the Vatican II sect is not the Catholic Church. The problem with and the deception of Taylor Marshall consists primarily in the fact that since he decides to cover almost every breaking news story in the Vatican II sect, and he does say many true things, People who listen to him think they are well informed about the current situation, but they actually aren't. He provides some truth, but disastrously false conclusions. In that way, he is very deceptive. He keeps people in the apostate Vatican II sect, the prophesied end times counter church. It feels like a communist takeover of the Catholic Church. It's taking the buildings and the robes and the vestments and the language and the look and the feel. Of Catholicism, but it's using it to promote a secular agenda. It certainly feels apocalyptic. He keeps people in communion with false bishops and adherents of the Novus Ordo, who in many cases are much more liberal than he is. The good Bishop Joseph Strickland. And thus, while he may say many things that are traditional, he has no problem with people who adhere to the Novus Ordo. Don't worry, I'm not going to bash the Novus Ordo. Yesterday I went to, to confession. And one of the things I confessed was being prideful and judgmental and worried and concerned about the state of the church and corruption in the church and um, scandals later that night, which was last night. And I was thinking on that point of being worried and concerned and judgmental and all these negative thoughts and emotions about the Holy Catholic Church, Mother Church. And as I was suddenly like... I saw this beautiful woman. She had blonde hair. She was perfect. No wrinkles, no spots. And I immediately discerned that this was Holy Mother of the Church. And she was writhing in pain. She was in a bed and there's sheets on her and she was very sick. And I noticed that her breasts were engorged with milk, tons of milk. And there were babies and children crying out to her that were hungry and she wanted to feed them and she was, she was upset but she was so sick she could hardly sit up from her bed. And then I thought to myself, oh, she doesn't want, she's poisoned. She doesn't want to nurse the children because then she'll give them the poison. And then there was this voice. It was like God or an angel, I don't know. And it said, no, the milk is still pure. The woman that Marshall wrongly thinks is the Catholic Church is actually the Whore of Babylon, the end times counter church. Since he considers Francis to be the Pope, people who follow Marshall are also led to consider Antipope John Paul II to be a saint, but that's a rejection of God and a mortal sin against the faith. It is prophesied in the Apocalypse. See our video, Apocalypse Now in the Vatican. So, well, JP2 went, I'm not weighing in one way or the other. He went every day. JP2 went, JP every, went day. every day. Well, good for him. He went every day. That's good. He had, he had, so, yeah, he he had, had, he had some good yeah. piety. St. John Paul II. I know there's people probably right now in the live chat and they're saying, yeah, but he's a saint. Taylor, he's a saint. He's a saint. He's a saint. He's a saint. He did good things. Eastern Europe, communism. Okay, I get all that. That's just one example of why taking the correct position on these matters is crucial. These facts, among others, are why people should not follow Taylor Marshall. I want to close this video by playing a short section from our video, Apocalypse Now in the Vatican. It deals with the prophecy in Apocalypse 17 about how the beast, that is, pagan Rome, returns in the last days and takes control of the city of Rome. The subversion and the inversion that we're seeing is really a conversion back to paganism. 
This results in shock, confusion, and astonishment among those who are not written in the Book of Life, that is, among those who, since they lack the true faith and goodwill, ultimately fail to recognize that the Vatican II sect is not the Catholic Church, but rather the prophesied end times counter church led by heretical anti popes. Hence, they are left shocked, confused, bewildered, and stunned by the anti Catholic activity coming out of Rome. We play this because Taylor Marshall's reactions to the current situation, in which he repeatedly expresses shock and confusion, while he fails to embrace the correct conclusions and positions, are another precise example of the fulfillment of this prophecy. Yeah. That's, that's outrageous that the number one, you know, European abortionist. Yes. He said she was a great woman or something like that. It's like forgotten what? grace. What? Yeah. She she's getting a back slap and Bono's in there and all that. And it's just craziness, folks. Martin Luther was not wrong on justification. Really? This is heresy. And this whole thing is a prop up for Luther and his doctrine of justification in which he says in the previous quote, he does not err. This is heretical people. Yeah. That's that's shocking. Um, I mean, the next one we are. This is Pope Francis. We are profoundly thankful for the spiritual and theological gifts received through the Reformation. Right. Really? Right. Like which one? Right. Exactly. The rejection like of to penance as a sacrament. The rejection of extreme unction. The rejection of matrimony as a sacrament. Is that one of the good right. gifts? A divided right. Europe. I mean, he's. Yeah, this is it's craziness. This is yeah, this is getting, nuts. Now, the apocalypse tells us that the beast was and is not and is to come, and that the people on earth who are not written in the book of life shall wonder when they see the beast that was and is not and is to come. The wonder at the beast refers to the shock, astonishment, amazement, and disturbed confusion people experience over what has happened in Rome after Vatican II. Starting with John XXIII, heretical antipopes who were not validly elected to the papacy took possession of the Vatican in accord with prophecy, and this led to the Vatican II revolution. As a consequence, the city of Rome lost the faith and returned to paganism, idolatry, and unbelief, reducing the true Catholic Church to a faithful remnant in the final days. Rome's return to paganism, idolatry, and unbelief in the post-Vatican II period has caused shock, wonder, and disturbed confusion among those who lack the grace and faith to recognize that a counter-church led by antipopes, not the true Catholic Church, is now in Rome and has taken control of the Temple of God and the Church's physical structures. Father Murray, what is this in your estimation? And are good intentions enough to receive Holy Communion in the Catholic Church? Uh, this is really a disaster, I'll say it straight out. It's a direct contradiction of what the church has always taught. This is casting aside the message of the gospel. You're not allowed to commit adultery. That's quite, that's the sixth commandment. You know, one thing that really puzzles me in this whole discussion is the resistance to describing things as they are. This is confusing. Yeah. There's something very odd going on here. So there's, there's some ver very strange confusion that is spreading out and out from this desire to, to regularize the irregular. This, this is what we seem to be seeing, and it is very confusing to the people at home and the people watching all over the world, not just here in the United States or at this table. What's happening? What are these men doing? It's very difficult to, to understand. I just read this for like the second or third time today and I'm still having trouble believing it's not fake news. The Pope giving the green light to shacking up. I, I'm sorry to be sarcastic. I can't, I don't know what to do with this anymore. I honestly don't. But friends, why? Why can't the Pope just issue a document that's just full on orthodox right out of the gate? Where does this come from? What is going on anymore? I don't know what to make of this. Holy mackerel. What is this man doing? It's just unbelievable. Why is, there a, why is there a liturgical action? I mean, we as Catholics see bowing down, burning of incense before these Pachamamas, processing them around on the stations of the cross, processing them into St. Peter's Square, processing them up to the altar in St. Peter's Basilica where the first Pope, St. Peter, is buried. How are we as baptized Catholics supposed to understand this? I don't know. <laughs> what do you do with this? How much, how much worse does it have to get? How much more absurd does it have to get? Heck, what is going on? Since they don't understand and refuse to recognize that what's occupying Rome and the Vatican now is not the Catholic Church but the end times beast and whore of Babylon, they are mystified and utterly perplexed to see paganism and apostasy and all kinds of heresy coming from the place 
where they expect Catholicism to be taught. This is the prophesied wonder at the beast. The reaction of so many to the paganism and evil in post-Vatican II Rome is a very striking and clear fulfillment of this prophecy. What's happened at this synod is the exact opposite. What they're doing is they're uh, taking a world which still has remnants of Christian truth to it and they're paganizing it. All right, in 2019, I was shocked, truly shocked, that Francis would issue the Abu Dhabi document. Well, Pope Francis has shocked the world and shocked those inside the Catholic Church regarding his statement on God willing the plurality of religions.